The speaker to the podium, the, uh, it's not the last speaker, is the first from the last, uh, Dr. Wafa Jamal. Uh, she is a reader in nanomedicine and uh, drug delivery in prostate cancer research fellow in the School of Pharmacy of Queen's University in Belfast, UK. And she will be talking about the magnetoliposomes heated by light, not by uh, alternative magnetic field. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. Thanks you for the organizer for giving me the opportunity to be here today. So as uh, the chair mentioned, basically I will be talking today about photothermally activated magnetoliposome liposome for cancer therapy and imaging. This is just the outline for my talk, so I'll just skip it to save time. And we have heard a lot of talks today where we are talking about cancer, which is considered as the second co uh, leading cause of death uh, worldwide. We had an uh, inspired talk talking about immunotherapy and new approaches to treat cancer patients. But what I tried to do to summarize on the left-hand side all the approaches uh, that have been used to treat cancer patients. And for some reason, we still have mainly chemotherapy and radiotherapy used to treat most of the cancer patients. The main problem associated with chemotherapy is really the lack of selectivity. So we have small drug molecules that will, following systemic administration, accumulate in the whole body, resulting in poor tumor accumulation as well as undesirable side effects. To overcome some of these issues in the last two decades, we start to have people where, um, and all researchers developing different delivery systems that will package the drug, spare the healthy tissue, as well as increase the tumor accumulation to the tumor and reduce the side effects. Liposomes are considered the most clinically developed system where they are consist basically of phospholipids. They are phospholipid droplets where they self-assemble in water due to the, hydro the amphiphilic nature. And that makes them, um, they are clinically approved. So starting from the 1990s, we have Doxil and other formulations. They are very easy to manufacture. They, have the, uh, they are suitable to accommodate a wide range of therapeutic agents, ranging from hydrophilic and hydrophobic drugs due to the, hydro, uh, the, the nature. So we have the hydrophobic, hydrophobic domain and hydrophilic domain that will accommodate different type of drugs, or they could be loaded at the same time. They are also very sterile in terms of size, shape, as well as the surface coating, where they could be loaded with drugs uh, or polymers to uh, increase their blood circulation, as well as targeting ligand to increase their selectivity. However, the main problem associated with liposome is really the high stability, where we're result, uh, resulting in very low and poor drug release. And to overcome this problem in the last couple of decades, people start developing a responsive system where the drug will be triggered in response to external stimulus. And in this case, we are focusing on the temperature-sensitive liposome, where in, in response to heat, different temperature, we start releasing and increasing the drug release. One approach is uh, changing the lipid composition. The second approach is to use nanoparticles. So different type of nanoparticles, like magneto uh, magnetic particles or um, uh, gold nanoparticles, they could heat up in response to external stimulus, triggering uh, on-demand drug release. Magnetic uh, nanoparticles, they are the most widely used, and they have been excellent um, heat mediators in response to magnetic field, as well as they have been uh, efficient uh, MRI imaging agents. And also, they have been explored in magnetic targeting to increase the tumor accumulation. What I showed you on the right-hand side, basically a scheme of magnetoliposomes that have been developed in the last, I would say, 30, 40 years, encapsulating different type of uh, magnetic nanoparticles, either hydrophobic one in embedded in the lipid bilayer or hydrophilic materials encapsulated inside the core or complex to the surface. Checking the literature, we have a significant amount of uh, articles published using magnetoliposome with um, magnetic heating, but the main problem, it was really difficult to reproduce some of these results. And the main issue associated with the magnetic heating is really that the heating rate depends uh, on different factors, like the amplitude uh, that researchers describe in the articles, the frequency which, because we have different setups, it's difficult to reproduce and based on the size of the coil and the frequencies, it makes it very difficult to research uh, one result to the other. Also, the main problem associated with the magnetic nanoparticles is that the heating property will depend on the particles themselves. So if people synthesize the particles, it will be different from purchasing them from somewhere else. If they are aggregated or not aggregated, if they are 
five nanometer or 20 nanometers, that all affect the heating properties. Beside this, we noticed that in most articles that they successfully report um, a successful heating with the um, magnetoliposomes, the concentrations, they're relatively, they were relatively high. So, and, and we tried it ourselves where they describe a concentration at least two milligram per ml, and sometimes you see 10 to 15 milligram per ml, which in fact, it's very difficult to translate this into vitro, in vitro or mainly in vivo because the amount of uh, nanoparticles accumulating at the tumor is really limited. So the main approach for uh, this project, what we try to do to design a magnetoliposome, because we still be believe they have uh, superior properties, but try to have the way we design them and the external stimulus we use to have a higher degree of controlled drug release. And that will have higher potential for their clinical translation. So what we did, the way we prepared our magnetoliposomes, we fabricated the nanoparticles in a way to increase their interaction with the lipid bilayer. And we had small nanoparticles around four to five nanometers mixed with the lipid component, and then lip hydrate the lipid film uh, with the aqueous buffer we would like to use, and then extrude to have small unilamellar vesicles, and containing the hydrophobic uh, particles nicely distributed in the lipid bilayer. Then we loaded them with the doxorubicin, which is considered as a standard chemotherapeutic agent using the remote loading method as uh, well established in the literature. So what I'm showing you here, just some of the, some of the TEM mm -hmm. images that we obtained. So to see what we see here, really small three to five nanometer hydrophobic nanoparticles well dispersed with minimum aggregation. And then at the bottom, we had different concentration of lipid to nanoparticles uh, ratio. And we could see nicely following the preparation, maybe it's a little bit difficult, but we didn't stay in here just to make it very easy to distinguish these uh, small nanoparticles. So we see nicely the distribution of the bilayer at the, uh, of the nanoparticles in the lipid bilayer. And by increasing the concentration of the particles, we see almost the liposomes completely filled. So this is just to mention, this is a TM image. So we need the cryo to, to confirm the distribution on the surface because they are not encapsulated in the aqueous core. They are associated with the lipid bilayer. And what we see here, by increasing the concentration higher, we see larger aggregates as well. And this represents the hydrophilic dispersion of the magnetoliposomes. So they were well dispersed with minimum aggregation. We studied next um, uh, the hydrodynamic size, and in agreement with the TEM, we could see nicely by increasing the nanoparticle concentration as we see increase in the intensity of the color. The size of the liposome gradually increased with slight increase in the polydispersity, indicating the incorporation of the nanoparticles in the liposomes. But interestingly, we noticed that impeding the different concentration of the nanoparticles did not really affect the melting point, which is important for triggering a drug release. So all formulations, they had a melting point around 42 to 42.5, and no changes really in the drug loading. So we maintained between 80 to 90 percent of doxorubicin encapsulation. We did a quick experiment just to make sure that we are not affecting the responsiveness of the formulation. So the formulation we used here, it's known to release quickly at 42 degree. All the formulation we had at 37, we almost had no leakage, less than 10 percent. And at 42, we still have almost 100 percent release within the first five minutes. So it was very promising to see the results we obtained. This is just using a water bath. But our aim is really to use something that we could trigger in a different way using a water bath. So we decided to use uh, a different uh, stimuli compared to what has been described in the literature. So we didn't use the magnetic field, we used the laser. So we tried to use uh, and treat the particles using a, uh, a laser setup. And in this case, it's well known with the gold nanoparticles, but we applied it for the magnetoliposome. Because we expect the light would interact with the um, gold nan um, sorry, magnetic nanoparticles, and the light will be converted into heat that will trigger drug release. And the fact we can use laser between seven to 900, it will even increase the clinical translation because we are working in the transparent window where we have minimum interference from the blood and the tissues. To confirm firms that we can heat the magnetic nanoparticles with the laser, what we did, we used small hydrophilic nanoparticles where we just changed the coating to something hydrophilic. And then we, what we did, we uh, selected relatively 
a low concentration between two to three milligram uh, particles per mil milligram of uh, magnetic nanoparticles per mL that we expected to heat. And we could see in less than eight minutes, we have almost more than th 30 uh, degrees change in temperature. The minute we stopped the laser, we could see a dramatic decrease in the temperature as well. <coughs> so what we decided to do is really to go uh, with lower concentration, because the aim is really to use lower concentration of the magnetic nanoparticles. And we could see that by changing the concentration of iron up, say, to one millimolar, the one millimolar will be equivalent to a roughly 55 microgram of iron per mL. So we're talking about micrograms per mL, not milligrams per mL. And we could still see in eight minutes, we have almost more than 10 degrees change in the temperature. We're excited to see that the magnetolipism at relatively low concentration using here around 55 microgram per mL. In less than eight minutes, we increase the temperature by roughly four or five degrees, which is required for uh, our formulation. So we could see the increase in temperature with the magnetoliposomes, as well as increase in drug release only with the magnetoliposome compared to the MT1. Finally, we assess the MRI properties because we would like to use them as also as imaging agent. And we could see nicely with our liposomes, we measured the R1, R2. And looking here at the table, we our liposomes, they had lower R, uh, one values and uh, almost 100-fold higher R2 value compared to the free, uh, liposo um, free hydrophil sorry, hydrophilic nanoparticles. And by calculating the ratio between R2 and R1, we have almost 300-fold higher sensitivity with our magnetoliposomes compared to the hydrophilic iron oxide particles. And that agrees with the phantom image where we could see with magnetoliposome at low concentration of iron, we start to see the changes in the signals. Well, with the free iron oxide, really, we start to see it at very high concentrations. What was more interesting to see that at 42 degrees, we maintained almost the same pattern, so we didn't really uh, lose the signals, and we still have higher activity of our liposomes compared to the free nanoparticles. So in conclusion, we successfully uh, engineered theranostic nanoparticles where we um, uh, inc incorporated hydrophilic, uh, hydrophobic nanoparticles in the lipid bilayer that nicely distributed, as well as maintain high drug uh, loading efficiency. At very small concentration of iron oxide, we managed to heat up in response to laser and trigger drug release. We still maintain the efficient and uh, kinetics from the formulation, besides having efficient MRI property with our magnetoliposome, so we have superior activity with the liposome compared to the particles where we expect higher sensitivity in future studies. Next, we will be assessing in vitro property of these liposomes to assist their biocompatibility, their behavior in vitro and in vivo. And finally, I would like to thank all the people who contributed to the work, uh, mainly to Colin and uh, Calvin and Nina and um, Ilaria and all the collaborators from Italy and Slovenia. Also, I would like to thank funders for funding, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you very much. Very clear, concise, precise. Question, burning question for Rafa. All the way in the back. Uh, <coughs> OK, a very interesting uh, lecture. Uh, I have a question. How can you control the uh, magnetic particle inside the liposome? You mean the concentration or the distribution? The concentration. So what we tried here, we did a quick experiment basically by uh, calculating roughly the number of lipid molecules versus the um, uh, nanoparticles. But we are relying also on the weight. So we will make like 100 microgram of the particles. And we did some elemental analysis to assist the encapsulation efficiency. Because we couldn't incorporate all the particles in the liposome. We had roughly around 30% incorporation. So if the procedure is reproducible and you are adding the same concentration of the nanoparticles each time, hopefully we have reproducible results in terms of the amount of the drug, uh, amount of iron oxide encapsulated. In terms of distribution, we have to work with fresh particles just to make we have minimum aggregation that will result in even distribution in the lipid bilayer. Thank you.
one more so that she Wafa can finish drinking uh, water. <laughs> yeah, otherwise um, we'll push out of the podium. Yeah, uh, my question is about uh, can can you use this approach to uh, doxyl formulation, where you have a doxorubicin inside in crystalline form? Would you? Um, it's interesting. I think it's possible, but the main problem also, if the lipid bilayer there, the melting point for doxel is above, say, 55 degrees, which usually doesn't have this clinical translation because the whole idea here is to use the mild hyperthermia, not to kill the tumor. It's mainly to trigger release as well as synthesize the cancer cells. So the release of from doxel. The problem will be re reaching the 55 degrees, but in this case, yeah, you are okay. resulting in uh, cell death rather than drug release. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank, thank again you. Wafa Jamal, and uh, we invite to the podium.